Good morning, Algebra 1 students. This is Mr. O'Sullivan with Lesson 9-8, putting together all the function transformations. Um, I was looking at the Regents exam from the past few years, um, and one of the things that I noticed is that yesterday's lesson with the stretching and the compressing, it's actually only popped up once or twice on all the incarnations of the Regents exam. So you're not going to see that stuff again with the stretching and the compressing until you get to Algebra 2, which is in two years. So the examples we're going to be looking at today are only based on shifting left, right, up, and down. Okay? So we want to be able to look at a function in any simple notation, similar to the ones down here, and tell each other if we're going to the left, to the right, up, down, stretched, or compressed. So I gave us some sentence starters. So you should be reading these sentence starters by yourself. I'll go through them. Um, but what's going to happen is we should be writing full out sentences like the function shifts to the right blank units. The function shifted to the left blank units. The function shifted up blank units. The function shifted down blank units. The function was stretched by a scale factor of blank. This means that you're going to have a whole number in front of your x. The function was compressed by a scale factor of blank. That's going to be a fraction. It's basically saying that I'm pushing down this function. I'm pushing it down and it's getting fatter and fatter and fatter or wider and wider and wider. Okay. And then here are some shift rules that you should write down on a separate sheet of paper. You should be writing all of these down just to add to your sequence. So whenever I have f of x plus a number where the number is on the outside, that's shifting it up. <clears throat> so I have an example called g of x plus 7, and that's shifting up my function 7 units. If I have f of x minus a number where the number is on the outside of the parentheses, that's a shift down. If I have f of x plus a number on the inside of the parentheses, that's a shift to the left. And if I have f of x minus a number inside the parentheses, it's a shift right. Please write down these examples. So note every function we will examine today is based off the parent function, y equals x squared. So example number one. I have y equals x plus 5 squared plus 6. The first thing I like to do is I like to basically go backwards. I like to look at the things on the outside of my parentheses. So that's on the outside of my parentheses, so that's telling me if I'm going up or if I'm going down. So if I go up, if it's plus a number, it's a shift up. So this is a shift up six units. And I have an x plus 5, which is telling me that I'm going to the left 5. And that's it. I just want to know what's happening in relation to your original function. Try to do the next one by yourself. Try to use the top to help you. Okay. So now I have f of x plus 2, and it's in the parentheses, so I have to look at case 3 or case 4 above. And I know that whenever it's positive, it's opposite. So I'm going to shift to the left two units. Now we're going to go into number 3, where we have f of x minus 5 plus 3. And I always go outside first. This plus 3 tells me I'm shifting up. So I'm going to shift up 3 units. And this minus 5 tells me I'm shifting right 5.
And last but not least, I have y equals x squared minus 3. The 3 is not attached to my x. It's on the outside. So that means it's going to be a shift down 3 units. And that's it for today. So your independent practice is to basically just practice these four examples in a different form. So if you have any questions, please email myself or email Ms. Townsend. Uh, tomorrow, you're going to basically be doing another practice where you're putting all this together. And can't wait to see what it looks like. It's going to be done on Google Forms. Make sure that you write your daily noticing and your daily question. And remember, email us if you have any questions. Have a great, great day.